Judge thank Moore. you, Councilman Furdock. Good evening to you all, and thank you for your interest in uh, coming down to see what's going on with the fire board candidates, and uh, you're very welcome to be here. Thank you. There will be a vote, as was mentioned, to fill three seats on the Lake County Fire Protection District Board of Directors. This coming Tuesday, November 3rd, most of you are interested to vote, should have gotten a um, sample ballot in the mail here shortly ago, and um, had a chance to digest it. <clears throat> I'm going to refer to the uh, Lake County Fire Protection District simply as the district for ease of reference, otherwise it's a rather long recitation each time. The four candidates running are running for three positions. In alphabetic order and the order in which their names appear on the recently posted sample ballot, which most of you now have received, are Michael W. Dean, Bud Moore, Jacqueline Snyder, and John M. Spree. Now they're seated before you in the following order, from left to right, chosen by drawing numbered cards. And uh, after the drawing, uh, first one, and that's to your immediate left over here, is Mr. Michael Dean. Next to him is Jacqueline Snyder, Ed Moore, and John Spree. Councilman Purdock, who previously served on the district board and whose late mother, Rosie Cheek, served before for many years, posed to the city council because of the relatively short notice time for the election that the council make these chambers available for a candidate's forum that was approved, and here we are. My name is Richard Freeborn, and as a longtime resident, and having personally been honored to serve 18 years as a volunteer fireman on the previous Lakeshore Volunteer Fire Department, which is now incorporated into this district, I was requested to serve as moderator, as Councilor Kurdoff alluded. Before I begin, the flag of our country is to the rear of the podium up here, and I would ask we all rise and recite the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, the format is as follows. I'm going to go through the outline of it and then we'll get started right away after that. First of all, each of the candidates, in order in which they're seated, will be given an opening statement of up to two minutes. Now, I'm not going to ring a gong on you or something if you go over a few seconds. Of, That's so my you know, Don't sir. get too carried away. And Councilman Purdock is running a clock up there so you can have a ready reference to where you are with it. Secondly, following that, the candidates will be given their responses to a series of seven questions which were formulated. Uh, I've got together with the fire chief, William Cepeda. Willie, is back there, you might stay Heidi. Hi. Yeah. And uh, also Councilman Purdock, the, the former member of the board here. Each of the candidates has been given copies of these questions, so they've had a chance to read them and reflect on them. I will state the question for your information, and then ask the candidates for their responses of up to two minutes, starting with question number one. And that will be to Mr. Dean, who is seated to the left, when we get to that point. I will state each subsequent question, and the first response will pass to the next person seated in order. We will proceed with all the questions in that order until they've had an opportunity to state their questions. I might add, there are seven questions. The reason we did that, I'm trying to keep this format into about an hour and a half and I'm allowing for a little bit of fudge factor here. And after that, I'm inviting the candidates to stick around for another half hour. We're going to try and wind this up by 8 o'clock at the outside. But if you folks want to stick around and visit with some of the folks in the audience, that would be welcome. And uh, that would give you a chance to ask any personal or individual questions you might have. <clears throat> I am going to ask the candidates to refrain from getting personal concerning any other candidate. If I judge that an answer has been given has given such a personal <coughs> reference, that person who has been alluded to will be given a minute to give his or her response. Finally, each candidate in order seated, thirdly, each candidate will have an order seated 
up to two minutes to give a closing statement. The audience is requested to refrain from commenting, clapping, or otherwise interrupting, so please don't do that. When we're through, as I say, the candidates will stay a short time and chat with you, and we'll finish up hopefully by 8 o'clock. So let's cut right to the questions. Mr. Dean, would you please give your response to the following questions, followed by Mr. Snyder. Number question, one, number one. Are we going to give an opening? Number, number one. Judge, are we going to give an opening? Pardon me? Will we give an opening statement? That's a heck of a good idea. I thought <laughs> it would be <laughs> How about that opening statement? You were right. testing me, I know. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Judge. Uh, my name's Mike Dean. I'm married to Kelly Slater. I have four children, two boys who both graduated from Clear Lake High School and two adopted daughters. I have vacationed in Lake County since I was six months old and have done it annually. In 1967, my parents bought into the Jago Resort and we know one of the cabins there since then. Subsequently, in 03, uh, Kelly and I started building our own house and in 04, I retired and moved up here. I'm a high school graduate, having attended college throughout most of my adult life. I'm an Eagle Scout, a second degree Order of the Arrow, a Navy veteran and a Vietnam veteran. I worked for Peralta Colleges for 34 years, starting at the bottom and working my way up in the grounds department from gardener all the way up to grounds supervisor. At one point in my life, I did, felt it was needed that I made a transition in my life, so I took on an apprenticeship program. I believe it was around when I was 48 years old and became an indentured um, stationary engineer for Peralta Colleges. Um, Additionally, I was shop steward for 10 years and chief shop steward for 15 years. My goals as a supervisor, shop steward, and chief steward was to support any and all personnel, teach by example, and encourage them to excel at their jobs. Um, I became, I started the stationary program in 1998 and completed it when I completed my indentureship and engineering and retired in 19. 2004, excuse me. I've served on the board of directors for Chase, <coughs> Jacob Bay Mutual Water Company, Homeowners Association for years. I've served as president, vice president, board member at large, and resident manager. I'm currently president of Lower Lake Community Action Group and have held that position for the last four and a half years. If you could start to wind up, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Dean. Mrs. Snyder, if you would, please. Yes, thank you. I'd like to start by thanking everybody who came here tonight. And uh, Mr. Perdock for uh, arranging this, and of course, uh, Judge, for you agreeing to come moderate it. I am a lifelong Clear Lake resident, born and raised here, graduate of Lower Lake High School. I was a volunteer for the Lake County Fire Protection District, initially the Lakeshore Fire Department for five years, was an EMT for 10 years, associate member for many years beyond that, and currently I am. And an incumbent. I am on the Lake County Fire Protection, Protect, Protection District Board of Directors. Um, I left the city long enough to go and get an education from a bachelor's degree from the University of the Pacific. Um, during that time, I had the opportunity to work for the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office and had some invaluable experiences that I use every day still. Um, I have a law degree from Empire College, currently a licensed attorney. I own my own practice in the city of Lakeport. I live in the district with my husband, Martin, and our young daughter. Uh, my parents live in the district as well. I'm here tonight asking that you consider voting for me as I believe that I have valuable experience that um, will lead this district in the direction that it is going and it needs to continue to go, which is a very positive one. Um, so again, I thank everybody for coming tonight. Thank you. Mr. Moore? I would like to thank everyone for coming this evening. I would like to give a special shout out to my daughter, Marty Harper. It's her birthday today. Uh, happy birthday, Marty. The reason why I say this, I've missed many uh, celebrations with my family over the course of 40 years as being a fireman. Maybe that's immaterial to some people, but I know it means a lot to a lot of other firemen who have missed the same with their families. As most of you already know, my name is Bud Moore. For those of you who don't know, I'm still Bud Moore. I'm a retired assistant chief and uh, officer <coughs> chief for Lake County Fire. I was also a candidate, I am one of the candidates running for the board of directors 
first off, the people who do not know me. I thought it was a good place to place my candidate statement in of qualifications during the equal opportunity filing period on the board ballot. That's why I put it in the magazine that you all received on your ballot. Second, I thought this forum would be a great way for the community to get to know me and where I'm coming from and what I think are good points and valid points for the district. I, deeply, uh, I am deeply rooted in the community. I grew up in Clear Lake, graduated from Laurel Lake High School. I raised my family. Now they, in turn, are raising their families here. Shortly after becoming a paid fireman, firefighter mechanic, I continued through the ranks and promotion under Chief uh, Ford Denman, starting out with Chief Don Parker. I promoted to Assistant Fire Chief, Operations Chief, through Board Chief Denman, leading to eventuality of serving under Chief Jim McMurray. So as you can see, I am deeply on my, uh, excuse me, uh, sorry. So you can see this department has been in my life for over 40 years. I would love to serve this department and I have the experience, knowledge, and inner workings of the fire district that will enable, enable me as a board to add volumes of insight, strength to the board. Okay, that's good. A few extra seconds if you're almost there. No, that's good. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Spree? Good evening. Thank you all for showing here tonight. Um, just a little we'll bit about that mic around, talk into it directly. Yeah, thank you. That, that, yeah, there, there we go. go. There we go. My name is John Spree. I've been a resident of uh, Lower Lake, California for 37 years. I've been married for 36 years to my wife, Connie. We've raised three children here in Lower Lake. Uh, been a fire, uh, volunteer firefighter for 14 years, started out in Lower Lake, and then when we uh, merged with the Lake County Fire. Um, 16 years at Home State Mining Company, and currently work for the uh, Lake County um, Special Districts as an EMT, which is an electrical mechanical technician, not a you know, the, uh, medical side of that part there. Um, I, like I said, we raised three, uh, three kids here out of the uh, Lower Lake High School. Uh, currently, I sat on uh, the Lower Lake Water Board, the Lower, Lower Lake Cemetery Board, and I'm currently sitting as an incumbent on the Lake County Volunteer Fire Protection Board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marie. Okay, now we pass to the uh, questions. Mr. Perdock, thanks again for the reminder. Uh, the first uh, question is, what is your overall impression of the Lake County Fire Protection District? Mr. Dean, if you please. The Lake County Fire Protection District is an outstanding group of men, women, who put their lives on the line for us daily. I saw the opportunity, community support toward our fire department during the recent fires, and it was moving and made me proud. I was honored to be appointed to the Board of Directors of Lake County Fire Protection District in January of this last year. This summer, as a board member, I had lots of opportunities to participate at the station and out in the field. I learned a lot and it was very rewarding. I spent over 125 hours and drove over 600 miles helping the department and the community during the Rocky Fire. I worked with other board members on the fire watches, <coughs> delivering food and beverages to the fire personnel and county employees. My overall impression is that Lake County Fire Protection District is strong, hardworking professional group that deserves our support and does a great job for our community. Thank you. Mr. Snyder, please, answer that same question. Thank you. I have to join in Mr. Dean's statements. This is a amazing staff and volunteers serving your district. The volunteers are dedicated. They're getting up in the middle of the night when they have to go to their job the next morning. Same thing with our professional staff. And what's so impressive is how well everybody works together, together including the current board, the current volunteer association, and the professional firefighters. As far as my overall impression, we're a great district and we're doing a lot of really good things with not much. <clears throat> I think that we have potential to do many more great things and we have excellent leadership right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Moore, same question. In the past, I saw people that thought 250 calls a year was an astronomical amount. They were almost baffled with that. Now they're running over 3,000 calls a year. I don't know what those people would think, how they can even handle it. I am so proud of the way Chief Zepeda and all the people now are handling these calls. It's just astronomical to me. I'll leave it at that. Fair enough. Mr. 
Mr. Spree, please. Thank you. I'd like to tell you what, what Bud just said right there. Uh, my impression of the you know, Lake County Fire is that a very professional, both men and women. Uh, the, currently, the department runs anywhere from 5,000 to 5,200 calls a year, with 85% of them of EMS. And like Jacqueline said, if it wasn't for our volunteers and stuff like that, I'll tell you what, with a 5 0 staffing that we're currently at right now, I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for our volunteers and, and that there, we wouldn't be a department that we are as, as, we, as we are today. So with that being said, I'm very proud of you know, the department I serve in for right now. Thank you. Second question. What are the challenges facing the district and how do you consider funding these? This uh, first answer will pass to Ms. Snyder. Thank you. Uh, the question kind of assumes, I think, the answer to that funding. Currently, funding is our biggest challenge because it affects every single thing we do equipment, staffing, um, and we're what we're really struggling with is recruitment and sustainability of our staffing levels. Um, things have changed. The volunteer side, uh, things used to be different. We had employers who were more ready, willing, and able to let volunteers leave and go on calls. And, and that's not where we are anymore, unfortunately. However, there are some great employers in this community who continue to do that. So what that means is we need to have more staffing the, the sustainability is an issue. We have people come in, they get incredible experience. The diversity of calls here and the amount of calls that people run, in two to three years of being a firefighter here, it would take them 10 years to get the same experience in the city. So some things that we need to do to consider funding these is, <clears throat> one thing that's on the table right now is there's a discussion about possibly creating an ambulance su subscription service, um, much like uh, REACH or CalSTAR have programs that you can pay membership to, and it will reduce your cost of your ambulance or be you free. That's something we can do to generate more funds. Um, one thing that we need to do is constantly reinvest in the medical side of the department because that generates funding in order to have the staffing levels and to provide the same continuity of services. Um, 30 seconds. Thank you. Additionally, one thing we need to do as far as sustainability is I think as board members, we need to take on the task possibly of heading out into our community, being uh, available at uh, Rotary or whatever else to talk about the importance of volunteers and get our employers back on board. Fair enough. Mr. Moore. It's always been a problem <coughs> is funding. Uh, you look at all, I look at all seven of your questions. The bottom line on all seven of your questions is funding. And that's a sad state of affair. When you're looking at funding, where does it come from? Uh, you have to have a uh, sustainable funding. You can't say, okay, we're going to fund it with this, then come to find out your funding is going to run out a year or two down the road. It can't be that. Uh, I would like to see funding that's more permanent basis. I have no idea right off the top of my head. I haven't been privy as of late where the funding is coming from or going to. Uh, again, I'm listening to the news on uh, Fox News and etc. Now they're saying that they're not going to fund the senior citizens' Social Security. They're not going to give them a raise this year. What's going to happen to these poor folks? They're already taxed to death. Now, we need more money. Everybody wants to raise the taxes. How, where are these people going to get it? Where is it going to stop? And we need money. The city needs money. Everybody needs money. I don't know where the money's going to come from, uh, but there is avenues that we have to look at, and I'm not for sure where they're at. Not being privy to what's going on at the firehouse at this time, I don't have an answer for that. And I don't want to guess or give an educated, I don't have an educated answer at this time. Sure. Mr. Breed, if you please. Funding's always been a hard time, you know, with Lake County Fire. I, I think with any fire district there, but the, the ones facing us, in my opinion, are, are the demographics. We are a large, low-income, medical, Medicare population. A lot of people don't know, but the district only receives reimbursements for a fraction of each medical call that they run. You know, that, this is tough for us, I mean, because we still have to pay our, you know, our EMTs and our paramedics and stuff the same, you know, but even though we're not receiving the funds that we should from the, from the Medi-Cal and Medicare uh, call right there. So it's, it's important that we seek alternative and unsustainable funding, you know, for example, grants and, uh, you know, intergovernmental inter transfers and GEMT, ground emergency medical transport funding, you know, these are the things that we have to look at right there. But then there were the challenges that I see that we're faced with right now. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. 
Mr. Dean, if you please. Okay, in my opinion, challenges facing the district are insufficient revenues, as everybody's talked about, retention of full-time paid staff and volunteers, increasing wages, and retaining existing benefits, procuring needed fire and medical equipment, all the above equates to the dollar sign money. Firefighting is expensive. In the past 30 years, the cost of key pieces of equipment have jumped more than fivefold, and that's the least of it. The time and training to become a certified firefighter has increased. The ability to retain employees is based on wages, benefits, and working conditions. We need to make sure that we put forth our best foot with our staff and volunteers. I would like to see the district expand its grant program for some for some of the medical and fire equipment that is currently needed. I've met with Esther Dyson, who is an author and philanthropist working on the Way to Well Hill project in Lake County. I talked to her about our need for two 12 12 lead cardiac monitor defibrillators, which cost $20,000 a piece. I am honored to be, <clears throat> excuse me. I am hoping to hear from her soon, and I think this is a way to attain needed equipment for the district. As the majority of the district income comes from property taxes, ambulance service, and fire protection, these are the areas most likely to generate more income to support our needs. Although I don't like saying it, if a sales tax earmarked for Lake County Fire Protection District for salaries and benefits were voted in by the community who would generate added funds to help manage the issues I think need attention. This tax would impact full-time residents, part-time residents, seconds. and visitors. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, we will pass to question three. And uh, the last first by Ms. Snyder. Where do you see the district in five to ten years from now? In other words, what's your vision? Pardon me, Mr. Moore, excuse me. Okay, five or ten year plans. Uh, in 40 years that I was there, they always have a five and a ten year plan. Uh, again, not being privy to what they are, is in place now, I, I don't want to say I want to go in there and change whatever they have as a five and a ten year plan. I do believe there is a five and a ten year plan. There always has been. Uh, things I don't want to see, I saw Middletown I thought was an excellent department. I used to, we used to work very closely with Middletown, the Yolks, uh, the whole Lake County was a very unique situation. Uh, whatever the five and the 10 year existing plans were, I'd like to see them. I'd be very happy to work with them as whatever they have in place right now. If I have something that I could possibly help them do, maybe uh, go ahead with those five and 10 year plans. Maybe they're coming up, maybe they be, need to be addressed. I, I'm not here to say, okay, I want to change everything today. That's not my point. That's not my purpose of running for this board. I want to help this department. I don't want to see them go down the tubes like poor Middletown did. That's not my idea behind running for this board of directors. And as far as the five and 10 year plan, I'll be behind whatever they have uh, insti uh, instituted at this time. That's what I want to do. Fair enough. Thanks, Mr. Mr. Spreed, please. Yeah, I mean, in five to ten years, I'd like to see, um, you know, to increase increase our staffing to 80, you know, as to uh, 50, you know, have it fully functional all the way through and through. Have uh, hazmat teams and technical rescue teams, stuff that we talked about in the past. But then again, if we go back to funding, it's okay to have these teams, but you know, we have to be able to sustain these, teams, you know. So that 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 is my goal for the next five to ten years. See something like that there. And also for the, the administration, we have an administration right now. They're, they're, you know, they're at my age. You know, they're looking for, you know, they're going to be uh, retiring very shortly. So I'd like to see in the next five, ten years another energetic, you know, administration that's going to walk in and take over and pick up where we're at right now. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Okay, where I see it in five to ten years, hopefully prospering. I hope to see the district moving forward from the current challenges. By then, I hope to see us recovered from this summer's destruction by the Rocky Fire. This area is a beautiful place to live and we need to encourage new business opportunities, tourism growth in the district. Growth in real estate sales will hopefully bring back tax base, making the district stronger and generating more available revenues. Turn up, Thank you. In five to 10, five years, years, obviously, as Mr. Spree indicated, I would like to see more staffing eight individuals on at any given time in our district, hopefully two stationed in Lower Lake, so there's a more rapid response there. Um, but I may not be here in five years. As a matter of fact, there could be another election in four years. And I think that we need to consider even more short-term resolutions. And one thing that I would really like to see in the 
implemented is a sleeper program in Lake. Um, you get the quarters there, and uh, I know that Lakeport Fire has had some success at times with their volunteers basically living in a station, and it keeps that station stand, uh, manned and staffed, and what that means to the citizens is a shorter response time. Um, obviously, for the volunteers and the professionals, I bet we'll see more education, more skills, and that means better service to the community. Additionally, we just went through a new ISO rating. For those who don't know what that is, that's the Insurance Service Office, and it's a for-profit company that comes in and rates our district. And what it really comes down to is how well we do affects your insurance rates. Um, right now, our rating is at six. Um, on a scale of one to 10, one is the best. I would like to see us move in a better direction, and I think the current board has the, the foresight to get us there. Thank you. <clears throat> Question four. What ideas do you have to increase staffing for the district over the next five years? Mr. Spree. I'd like to see staffing increase, you know, by working with the local colleges. You know, to maybe offer more firefighter one certificate programs, you know, internships and possibly even scholarships for the you know the folks right here. You know, continued support of intro introduction to firefighting and, and advanced firefighting now being offered to Lower Lake High School at this time right now. And continue looking for additional funding sources. Fair enough, thank you. Mr. Dean. Oh, in order to increase staffing without draining district money, I would suggest, suggest starting a program to attract new volunteers. The district needs to launch a recruitment program for volunteers and potential full-time personnel. This could be done by promoting the existing, existing programs available at the high school and college and fire department. The full program are available locally. You can encourage earlier training and provide a local career path. By training and employing local people, they are more likely to stay in county and not use these positions as a stepping stone to go elsewhere. I think when we discuss increasing staffing, we need to remember it's not just paid individuals, but we get a lot of our staffing out of the volunteers. So much like Mr. Dean indicated, we have to keep things local. Um, we talked earlier about sustainability and, and keeping people here. We need to reinvest in our community. Um, currently, there are classes going on for Yuba College, UT classes, um, a fire technology class that's being taught by one of our firefighters at Lake High School. And that's the reinvestment in our community. People who love Lake County stay in Lake County, and I'm one of those people. So we need to attract those people, and that will help us. Um, additionally, the, unfortunately, it all does come back to funding when it comes to the professional. However, I'm hopeful that we're seeing our economy increase and do better. If we were where we were in 2007, hopefully this would even be a discussion, but we're starting to see more buildings, more home sales, turn more property tax. Um, and, and I think just continuing with the reinvestment in the community. Additionally, we have a fire chief that currently is very active um, and everybody knows him and that helps our department. So by maintaining strong staffing and strong leadership that we currently have, that will help us in the future. Thank you. Mr. Moore, One of the sales points of consolidation was Lower Lake was minimum staffing at Lower Lake. That has always been a point that I would really be uh, behind in any way, shape, size, or form that I could. Uh, even if it was to the point of possibly feasibility of seeing if we couldn't get volunteers, I realized the volunteers, I talked to people in Lower Lake and they mentioned that uh, when Lower Lake was a department, they had 35 volunteers, the uh, Clear Lake had uh, 50 volunteers. I know that's gone away, I'm a realist, but see about getting some basic firemen, have a fireman that's first aid trained, CPR trained, and hazmat trained. Let's start with the basics. Let's don't try to make them paramedics. Let's don't try to get them hazmat techs and everything else. Let's try and get some basic fire people back into the service. Uh, and I agree, the trouble is, I see it all the way across the boards, the whole gamut. You look at the sheriff's department, you look at dispatch, you look at the CPD, everybody's moving to Santa Rosa, the Bay Area. They, I don't see how those people figure it's any different. You look at what a price of gas is in this town, and they say, oh, I gotta get out of here. 
go look at what the price of housing is and stuff in the Bay Area. I don't see how they figure they're getting ahead. Yes, they are getting more money. I don't think they really look at what they're getting for their bang for their buck in the Bay Area versus what they're getting here. Maybe I'm wrong because I've been here all my life. I stayed here for a reason. I love this community. 30 seconds. I got it. We'll pass down to the next question. Uh, what ideas do you have to increase the district infrastructure to include existing and additional facilities? And we'll pass back to Mr. Dean as our first answer. Again, this question is all about money and resources. We need to bring more money into the district to pay to maintain and improve our infrastructure. We have the firehouse in Lower Lake that if man would decrease our response time to the southern end of the district and could reduce our ISO rating along with the fire insurance premiums for many residents. We have wonderful volunteers at the Lake County Fire Protection District. Over the years, it's become more difficult to have our volunteers manning these positions. Part of this is the result of new standards and requirements for the, from the state, which have moved towards professionalism. The hardship is attributed to the changing nature of employment in the district and the difficult people difficulty people are having in getting time off. Ms. Snyder. Currently, we have um, two larger stations, the main station, Station 70 down here in Clear Lake, and Station 65 in Laurel Lake, and several outlying stations. Um, Laurel Lake is a relatively new station in the, in the scheme of things. Our station <coughs> in Clear Lake, it's older, and it needs a little TLC. The board recently approved funding and has begun to expand it, um, including there is not used space, and so we're uh, expanding the sleeping quarters for the on-duty firefighters. Um, I think we need to look at, seriously, new building. Um, there's long time been discussion of building subdivisions on Dam Road, and sometimes when we have developers come in, we can work with them to do things to make our community a better place. One thing we need to look at is maybe we would need a smaller station out where a new um, housing development could be. Additionally, we have mitigation fees that we can use to fund these things, continue to pursue grant funding, um, and we are growing, and we have to keep an eye on it, and that's our responsibility as board is to make sure that our community continues to get excellent services. One thing that I think is really important is that um, the, the board approved funding so that we could make some essential changes to our local station. Not just expanding sleeping quarters I spoke of, but updating, paint, new windows, and securing our facilities. We have to be mindful of the times that we live in, and we have an obligation to protect our employees, and we're making sure that happens. Fair enough. Mr. Moore. I, I agree that uh, infrastructure is buildings. Infrastructure goes further than that. That goes into training. Uh, personnel, infrastructure can mean a lot of things. Uh, we need to keep up to date with uh, the most modernized training, which we do for the most part. I'm very pleased with the training I see going on down there, but it needs to expand, keep up to date uh, with every state-of-the-art thing we have, and I'm very pleased with what I've seen going on down there. But that's part of the infrastructure, and again, it comes down, as I said when I first started, all seven of these questions comes back to financing, and that's hard. For a little department like this, depending on the uh, people of this district, it's hard on the people of this district uh, to keep saying tax, tax, tax. It's hard to. And I understand that. I'm a taxpayer as well. What about additional facilities? Do, uh, do you foresee that or see some benefit to that? No, because we have, you look at, we have a station out on the peninsula. We have a station in the park. We have one at the airport. We have a main station at Clear Lake. We have a very nice station in Lower Lake. Right now, I see if we utilize what we have, we do have a uh, obsolete station at Point Lake View. I think if it was uh, utilized, uh, remanufactured, refurbished uh, somewhat, to, and there needs to be some sort of type two, three truck possibly put out there to help those folks on Point Lake View. Maybe we need to readjust the lines as far as mutual aid with Kelseyville. That might be a feasibility. Kelseyville can get sure get to Point Lake View a lot faster than we can. I've always thought that. That's not just my opinion. Fair enough. Mr. Spree, if you please. And currently, the staffing and the infrastructure barely meets the needs of our growing communities right now. Uh, we currently have buildings and equipment that are dilapidated. 
not up to code and understaffed. And just like Mr. Moore said, you know, the funding, it always comes back to funding. And, you know, yes, we do have outbuildings out there, but we don't have the volunteers to staff these. So it all comes back to staffing again. So these are just huge areas that need to be addressed. And by doing that, you know, it is, you know, it's like Jacqueline said that we need to get out there and, you know, the volunteers. But no, we do have some outbuilding, but like I said, they're so dilapidated, we can't even, you know, I mean, it's all about the money to take care of this here, so. Thank you. Fair enough. <clears throat> Mrs. Snyder, question six, where do you think you are best, where do you think you are best able to benefit the district and the communities it serves? I think right where I am, uh, continuity on the board is important. Personally, I think what I bring to the table is, I, I am an attorney. I love lawyer jokes, so I think we'll be a little this, but we do think differently. Um, I bring that to the table. Um, additionally, I love this community. Born here, raised here, I chose to come back here. Um, and as far as the district goes, I can offer what I know professionally, but I also have the spirit and the love of this place. And it goes from attending meetings, making sure that we are spending your finances, your tax money responsibly, right on down to this summer during the Rocky Fire in particular, every single board member did something to assist this community. Myself and Diane Watson, who's a current board member, manned phones so we could keep the station open later so we could give out information. Um, Mr. Dean and the other members were out scouting, trying to see where the fires were. So what I can bring to the district isn't just sitting in a meeting, making sure your money's spent responsibly. It's being at the department, letting know the volunteers and the staff that we care. And I think that my experience being a member of this department, both as a younger person and later in life, um, will offer a lot. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moore. Please. Well, I've seen a lot of things in my career, from bowling down Main Street after an auction <laughs> to uh, working for months on the bulldozer by myself out here on Olympic Drive getting the station ready. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every aspect. I worked with other volunteers building the association building, building the main building. I, it's in a little disarray right now, but it's getting better. And uh, I feel that we need to try and uh, rustle up some volunteers. And, and I agree with everybody else. It's hard. It's hard nowadays to uh, work in, as an employer. Employers don't want to give up that time. Their, their, their dollars are hard to come by, too. It's not like when I was a volunteer. I used to carry an 80 plus percent average, and I was proud of it. That, that's impossible nowadays, especially when you're up around 5,000 calls. Granted, a high percentage of them are uh, medicals. I remember when John Eckhart and I used to be the two of us running medicals. I will do anything and everything. I worked real hard on trying to get the streets named out at Magic Jack's, uh, the Noble Ranch, working on Black Bass Pass, Spruce Grove, uh, Campbell Ranch, trying to get those people all road numbers for all the services so they were easier to find. That was a pet project of mine. And uh, that's things that I would like to still continue to do. That's all things that are important to this community. So everybody, all the services, the county, the sheriff's department, uh, uh, child protective services, everybody can be found. Thank you very much. Mr. Spree. Uh, well, I've been a resident of Lower Lake for 30 years, and um, 30 plus years, and I was on the department for 14 years, and I was kind of dissatisfied with the past governance of the board. I was, when I retired from firefighting, from firefighting, and I was I was trained very well by Bud Moore, by Willie Cepeda, by Chris Valeria, uh, Charlie Dean, and stuff like that. So I was very good at my job as firefighting. But there was more. Like I said, I, would, I, had, I was dissatisfied with the past government, so I wanted to sit on the other side. So I was appointed back four years ago to this board. Um, but I didn't know a lot about the administrative side. I was sitting on this board. And recently, right now, I sit on the board of the um, Budget and Finance Committee. I sit on the, uh, the House Committee. I also sit on the, um, uh, the Equipment Committee. Okay? And with, it, with that there, you know, and learning and from Willie, from the chief that we have now, with my board experience, county and life experience, I feel I'm a good match with this board, and that's why I'm asking for your vote here this evening. So, thank you. Okay, Mr. Dean, please. Okay, my background is maintenance and negotiations. As I've stated, as chief steward, stationary engineer, and supervisor for, for more than 15 years, I have experience that is valuable and applicable to my position at Lake County Fire Protection District as a board member. 
I've worked with management employees to negotiate union contracts. I have many years experience in figuring out solutions to different difficult problems and the need to work as a team. When a course of action is decided, a united group can get the job done better and quicker. I work from the premise that good communications, respect, and consideration will benefit everyone. Since moving to Lower Lake in 2004, I've gotten very involved in this community. I'm president of Lower Lake Community Action Group. I've been in this position since 2010. This group works for the benefit of Lower Lake residents, businesses, schools, and as president, I work with all of the above. We put on our annual Lower Lake Days Parade, which provides a great community event over Memorial Day weekend, and the district participates in this event. This event helps Lower Lake Firehouse Excuse me, this event helps Lower Lakes Firehouse as it is located directly behind the park and many of our attendees enjoy touring, touring the equipment and the facility. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moore, any final thoughts or comments regarding the district? The district, the bottom line, and again I'll say, I've said this numerous times, is finance. I don't have the idea or uh, the Bottom line, as far as finance, uh, again, I feel sorry for most of the people in this district on account of the limited finance. I would be willing to help in any way, shape, size, or form to help figure out how to finance this district. I wish I was a rich person. I'd love to go out here and buy a, a lottery ticket tonight because I can assure you the majority of it would go to this district. Uh, I've always been there to help no matter what. I've given up. Uh, days off, I've given up birthdays, a lot of other things. Uh, I've always been here for this department, and I will be until I draw my last breath. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say. I've always been pro fire department, and I will be for the rest of my life. Thank you, Mr. Spree, please. Yeah, at this time, I'd just like to say uh, one thing uh, before we get done. I don't know how many people here know, but this year we're operating on a budget of $4 million. $4 million sounds like a hell of a lot of money, but 70% of that goes to the wages and benefits of our employees, 70%. 26% of our, our budget goes to supplies and services. So that doesn't leave a lot for the, you know, for the 4% that we have left for what we're trying to do for the training, sustainability, and everything else here. So I just wanted you folks to know that right there. That being said, I can only hope and wish that the fire department continues to operate as a professional, well-run community asset as it is now. The current administration has done an exceptional job, and I, for one, have a strong sense of pride for all they have accomplished, and I am a, and, and that I am a member of the Lake County Fire Protection District family and this community. At this time, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dean, please. I've served as a director for the district for almost a year now, and I feel that I have contributed significantly in this short period of time. The current board of management and staff have worked incredibly well together, dealing with everything from basic fire calls, EMT paramedic calls, to the Rocky Fire, and the potential evacuation of the avenues. I want to continue to work with the great staff and volunteers of Lake County Fire Protection District, as it has been my pleasure to serve with them as a great team. I hope to continue in this position and ask for your vote. I also would like to, your participation. I would like to encourage you to help us think of ideas to help us deal in, with these difficult issues. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Spanish, please. Thank you. I would have to mirror the comments made by Mr. Dean and Mr. Spree. This, this is a fantastic department. I've been a part of it for years, and I've seen the transitions it's made. We have a strong board. We work well together. We disagree together, but ultimately it comes back to the greater good of this community. We have an incredibly strong administration. And I would remind everybody that we're a public agency. Everything we do is public. Um, so that being said, if you have questions, come down and ask. Everything is available for your view. We're happy to show you around the station. Obviously it depends on our staffing and if we're on calls, but no secrets, come on down. Um, I think that where we are in this district is important to look at. We're doing amazing things with not much money, as John indicated. But we're getting it done. We're getting grants. We're being wise with our budget, which means we're managing your money well. I'd like to thank everybody again for coming out tonight and listening to us and listening to our ideas. And, and I really like what Mr. Jean said. We're 
public agency, come on down, give us some ideas. Look at our budget. Give us some, some ideas of how we should spend your money. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have to say that the uh, candidates have surprised me considerably by being so concise, far more than I'm used to seeing as a moderator. Thank you very much. That being said, I think we have a little extra time. I checked with Councilman Furdog. Uh, would you folks be willing to uh, field a few questions from the audience? Certainly. Fair enough. I believe you had a question over here, and if you could please stand and uh, state your name and concisely state your question. My name is Mike Dunlap, and uh, I, I, before I ask my question, I would like to congratulate my chief and, and the department for their response this summer. We've been through an incredible amount. I'll use the microphone. Okay. That way the people in TV land. <laughs> there are people in TV land? Okay, I'm Mike Dunlap, and, and thank you, Willie, and thank the department. You guys have been outstanding. Um, what has been apparent to me and a lot of other people in the county uh, in the last few weeks, uh, it's been over a month now, is that um, the county's Office of Emergency Services has kind of been lost, uh, well, missing in action is the polite term I'll use. Um, there's question as to what will happen next. Um, I'm disappointed that nothing has happened now. We still don't, we still don't have sirens up. Uh, we don't have an emergency broadcast system utilization plan in the county. Um, I would like each of you to tell me what you think in terms of where do you believe the Office of Emergency Services should be? Should it be at the Sheriff's Department? Should it be a standalone office? If so, who does the answer to? The Board of Supervisors, the Fire Departments, and, and I'll take my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dunlap. Mr. Dean, would you care to address that? Well, I'm kind of heavy. Um, I guess at this point, having gone through an earthquake in the Bay Area and dealt with stuff, probably the best place for OES would be under the Sheriff's Department. Um, having gone through the earthquake, I found that there was a lot of issues, as you say, that uh, weren't address during the earthquake but we had people that including presidents of colleges that would go around and physically take down barrier tapes where we had gone around with police department and everything shutting buildings down and the college presidents were saying no we have to have them open no we don't have to have them open the director of physical plant was in charge along with the sheriff's department so I believe that the sheriff's department should be linked with maybe the fire department and, of course, the local police department here, and uh, go from there. Thank you, Ms. Snyder, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Dunlap. Um, <clears throat> this has been a tough summer, as you mentioned, not just for the citizens, but uh, OES has been through it too. They they've had some leadership transitions right in the middle of this chaos, and that obviously did not serve the community well. And I think. One thing we could have done to minimize that is they need to be under the sheriff's office because there's somebody there and trained with the familiarity they need to keep a continuity of services to better serve you. So I agree, I think it, it needs to be um, under the sheriff's office and there needs to be more communication. I spoke to um, uh, somebody in Laurel Lake who shows you how wired I am, had no communication of what was going on during the fire. Um, and I, of course, said, well, you know you can get Nixle alerts on your cell phone. You know that they'll call you. I don't have a cell phone. I don't have a smartphone. And my phone lines went down. So you don't have a cell phone? I almost, yeah, it was a little tough on me. But um, it, you're right. Um, you were let down. But I think the solution is it needs to be with the sheriff's office. And that's the sheriff then would answer to the board about what's going on. And again, hopefully, hopefully we're never in this situation again. But hopefully, if we are, there's strong leadership within that that department, so you're not left alone. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Please, I believe there's a joint powers agreement. Usually, when you get a large incident like that, you get the fire department, the OES, the uh, sheriff's department, CDF, and uh, all of the joint powers together. Then they utilize the scene, <coughs> facilities, and uh, I believe they bring in. Uh, uh, 
Red Cross and any other thing they need and decide what needs to be done. That was my understanding. And usually it's a joint power, so they're all there. <clears throat> so who's in charge? I'm not sure. Again, that's a joint power, so they all get together and decide what needs to be done. And then they disperse from there. Uh, my last understanding. Mr. Spreeski, please. I don't think that's a great question. Thanks for answering that. I think, you know, I think the community was over overwhelmed with this last, this most recent thing here. And nobody's ever looked at this it's, it's the, the way you're looking at it right now. And I, I think in the past, and I'm not sure, and don't quote me on this, but I think it's always been under the jurisdiction of the Sheriff's Department. But I think the biggest thing is here is we have to communicate with one another. I don't think that a lot of, you know, departments talk with one another. Sheriff's Department, the Fire Department, to OES, to the government, to the Board of Supervisors. I think that's where we, where we really broke down in this time. So that being, I, I, I think we should follow the sheriff's department, but I, I hate to say the word like committees, have committees, you know, to report. But uh, I'd like to say, you know, with the sheriff's department and then go from there. Just a historical note, I recall when I first came to the fire department uh, in 1980, we had our own uh, dispatch down here and that required, of course, challenge uh, to get dispatchers and so forth, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm not sure what the other districts were, but uh, the suggestion has been to get together with the various emergency services organizations and see what happens. With them. Okay, um, I'd like to thank you for that. Are there any audience questions? Anyone else in the audience would like to uh, proffer a question here? Yes, sir. Why don't you step forward and talk into the mic as a question by uh, Councilman Perdon. Thank you. Introduce yourself if you would kindly. Hello, I'm Brad Chatham. Um, I'm on the Lookout Tower Volunteer Project. And I was in Kelsoville Fire Department when Rocky, or excuse me, when uh, Valley Fire was called in. And it was just devastating the next, next couple of hours. My thing is, is new technologies. And I heard two candidates mentioned new technologies tonight and I want to know if you're willing to put out to the community <coughs> asking them if they have any new technologies, new ideas because there are some and I have some and I would like if you could welcome me to bring them forth to you. Not just myself, I've spoken with other scientists and other people have patents and we have tried to contact, unfortunately, Cal Fire with new technology, and it was very difficult. And, and I'm not just saying just in the last month or two months, the last six years. I pretty much hate to say this, but I will say it. <laughs> so they can see my face. Uh, they stonewall. They are water, pumps, and hoses only. They drop a little bit of things from the sky, and that technology is not working, and there's new technologies. And I've asked Willie if I can come and demonstrate to him. I would like to demonstrate to the board, and anybody else that was on the board, uh, some new technologies that absolutely <coughs> astound anybody that knows about fire science. Is there a question anywhere in our future? Yes. Will you welcome this of, of the public? I, I thought I made that clear. I want I want input from the community. Yes. I don't want to sit on a board and... Would you be willing to put something in the paper asking people to come forward? Because I know people right now in this community, in this county, that have technology that is just it's amazing and they get stonewalled. And so is, is it possible to put something in and invite these people in? I mean, they're so frustrated because they can't. Or this question as a judge. Fair enough, but uh, I think that's going on a bit, uh, Mr. Chapman. But as far as any new technology is suggested by Mr. Chapman, Ms. Snyder, do you have any thoughts or response? Yeah, absolutely, our, our door is open. I think the board would have to get together and figure out how we can make this happen, um, but the more educated, the more prepared we are, the better we serve everybody. And it actually gives me 
the links and comments I made earlier, maybe what we need to be considering doing is a yearly open house so that our community feels more welcome and come meet us, come meet our firefighters, come see our equipment. So thank you. Mr. Moore, you don't want to be an ostrich and stick your head in the sand and say, no, I don't want to see anything new. That's the worst thing you could ever possibly do yourself, sir. You know, you might have an idea. I used to go, we used to have two drills a month. I tried to go to every one. I, my intent was maybe somebody there knew one new thing. I would pick up one new thing almost every night. And I thought I was a better person, a better officer by learning that one new thing. I didn't have all the answers. I wasn't perfect. So I used to say I usually picked up one new thing every night I went to drill. And I would go twice a month. Mr. Spree, please. Thank you for that question. And I want you to know that we work for you. <laughs> the bottom line is we meet the fourth Tuesday of every month right here at the Firehouse here on Olympic Drive. Please come by. It's a public agency. The doors are open. It's so transparent. We'd love to hear from you. Not all you, but the other people that we serve. We work for you folks. Okay? Thank you. Mr. Davis, please. Anything further on that? Or you don't, I know you don't recall that or comment. Fair enough. All right, any other member of the audience care to offer a question? Yes, in the back there, please. Please step forward. <clears throat> Good evening. Please introduce yourself. Stage question. And we'll start uh, with, with the answer to the third person. Just more, please. I'm nervous being kind of Oh, just <laughs> like, we don't wait. <laughs> Uh, my name is Sherry, and uh, I'm kind of new in the area. Last name, Bradley. Uh, Bontrager, Sherry Bontrager. Thank you. Um, and I have some concerns about fuel management. I don't know much about fire science. Um, I'm interested in being a volunteer, so I'm really excited to hear that you guys are looking for volunteers and more staffing because that's kind of what I want to do with my life. But um, I would like to know from you guys if there is anything being done in terms of fuel management in the area, just because um, I understand that the Valley Fire was like an anomaly, but um, when I look around the counties, it's kind of concerning, and I was just wondering what, if anything you guys have to say about fuel management. Thank you. May I address you, Sherry? Sure. Okay. Uh, there is, there's always been ongoing, and now the- you bring the mic around there. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't want to be rude and call you by your first name, so that's you know I asked. Uh, there's an ongoing <coughs> program now, uh, Lakeshore, Lake County Fire has gotten into an abatement program uh, to start addressing that. There are rules and regulations already implemented in place by the state, the city, and now I believe the fire department is starting into it. And that will help as far as clearances, uh, lots, acreage, and etc. So that'll make a difference how your neighbor addresses things. If you have a problem with a neighbor, you have a problem on your own place. You can go to the fire department and tell you what the clearances need to be. If uh, It's going to take a while to get acreages and stuff cleaned up. There are things already implemented that, you know, it just has to be so many feet back from property lines and et cetera. There's rules and regulations statewide, countywide, citywide, and now it'll be in the fire department. So that's already been instituted. It's going to take a little while. Please be patient. But if you have a problem, go to your local fire department and say, hey, I have a problem. Here's where I live. And it really helps if you take an AP, your partial number in, your address, your street number in. That really gets a jump on things. Uh, I'm saying this from past experience. Where you're at helps them to uh, expedite things. AP number being your assessor partial number. Yeah. Tax bill. Right. Yes, thank you. I, that's where I was headed next. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Spree, if you please. In the past, as volunteer firefighters, we used to go out and do control burns, and they would set up with the community and stuff like that. We would burn certain individual places and stuff like that. Well, in the, you know, in the, the past year, now with air quality control, it's hard to do that anymore, to try to do these control burns. And yeah, the, 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 the fuel load is just, you know, crazy right now, and I understand that. but. Yeah, like Bud said, I mean, you know, there's a lot of different avenues, and it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'd like to see the control burns come back and, and start taking care of this, so thank you. Mr. B, I don't think I can elaborate anymore. I think Bud and John uh, hit the points of our issue, or her issue, right? Uh, Ms. Snyder, if you please. The, the department and the board are actually doing things actively to deal with weed management. As a matter of fact, Mr. Furdock worked on it prior to um, leaving our board, and 
we're starting to do things with citations. One major issue we have as far as lot clearing simply is absentee land, landowners. Can't find them. Um, one thing that's happening is we're starting to work more closely with code enforcement to deal with it, situations like this. And the city of Clearly has just added several code enforcement officers, so that just increases the possibility of getting things done. Um, but you're right, something has to be done, and it's, it's scary out there. Jeff, one more thing, please. Sure, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, one thing we were running across prior to my leaving the department was the fact that uh, we were getting quite a few asthmatics, and we were getting a lot of juveniles with asthmatics uh, in the schools and stuff, and we were getting a problem with our burning. It, burning is one of the best tools I could ever see as far as control burning, teaching people how to work with live fire. That is one of the most fantastic tools I ever saw in my career. But again, you got to think about the public. You know, they, they have their rights, and you know, if you're making some little kid sick and you can't breathe, that's a real no-no. So we really had to watch out for that. But there are areas out by the sewer ponds where uh, John works, and there are places that you can still get a little bit in, but not like it used to be. I just want to add that, that as part of it, because we have to watch out for people's health issues as well. Right, thank you. Anyone else in the audience care to pose a question? Okay, then uh, we'll uh, pass to the closing, and uh, again, given the fact that uh, folks have been commendably concise in their responses, we'll allow a little latitude there. Mr. Dean, do you have a closing comment? I just would love to serve on the board, and I hope you vote for me. Boy, that's concise. <laughs> Ms. Snyder? A lot of pressure now. Uh, again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight and listening to us and our ideas. Uh, I believe in this board, I believe in continuity, and I hope that when you make your viewcast your vote, you vote for me. Thank you. Again, I thank the Judge Freeborn for taking his time this evening. I thank all of you folks for taking your evening, your time. Uh, Mr. Burdock, thank you for your timely uh, actions over here. And trying other board members, I'm not being one, but nevertheless, I appreciate you folks coming out. You camera folks, reporter folks. Uh, photographer in the back and everybody else I appreciate you coming and spending your evening I hope none of you were missing the football game you wanted to see this evening but thank you I would appreciate a vote from you folks as well thank you thank you and Mr. Spree what can I say thanks <laughs> you know, I mean really I mean it's it's everything I've always wanted uh, like I said I, I can't thank the board that I'm sitting on now uh, that I've never worked more harmoniously with the board that I do now. We are a very diverse group that's sitting there right now. We have everything from federal employees, government employees, uh, you know, county employees, attorneys, retired folk, farmers. I mean, that is great. But just please don't ever forget that we work for you folks. We work for you and nobody else. I mean, so please come down and just let us know what your, your you know, your ideas and your suggestions are because it ultimately we work for you. And that being said, thank you again for your time and and Mr. Purdock, I was wondering, can I have one of these butterfingers up here? <laughs> uh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Just for more thank you for your time. I want to thank each of the candidates for enough interest in our community and the fire services here, emergency services, for coming down to uh, tell us about your candidacies and for the audience having enough interest to be here this evening. That being said, uh, I will call this to a close and invite folks to chat a little further informally if you wish to do so. And uh, I guess that does it. Thanks, everybody, for coming down.